Beloved Father, Mother, Divine Universal Presence, our inner divine selves and heavenly sponsors, we give grateful thanks for this grand opportunity of our synergy together as vessels of a great light, healing, blessing, and advancement of humanity. Thank you for all the healing, the blessing, the light, the codes, and everything that want to go through these recordings for humanity, that they reach everyone they're meant for, and they do their alchemical magic to help heal, transform, uplift, and raise humanity into this age of enlightenment, freedom, and peace. And we are so grateful we accept these things done in accordance with divine will and the highest good of all. So be it. You <laughs> Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and this program is about the exploration of our consciousness, how we're evolving. And my job has been to search the planet for those people that are part of this wave of ascension, this wave of transformation. And that is why I'm here today in Sedona, the lovely Red Rock City of Sedona, with Aurora Juliana Ariel, and she has been a mystic, a a, a conscious vehicle for the upliftment of the planetary consciousness. She had an awakening as a child, and she's been on this mission for for decades, let's say. (laughs) But I am so happy. 22 years. (laughs) At least. (laughs) No, I'm so happy we're here because she has so many valuable things. When I was sitting with you, we just started to open up and everything that I've been hearing in pieces sort of came through you in one giant whole, one giant holistic (laughs) approach to consciousness. So tell me about, Mm -hmm. tell me about your awakening and how that happened, and what your mission is. Okay, well, I would say I was a normal girl, Mm -hmm. a barefoot beach girl that grew up in Malibu, and just an idyllic life, riding my horse, being in the ocean. And I started having awakening, a remembrance, and I had divine visitations that were amazing, yet tangible for me and real and these visions that were forthcoming that allowed me to wake up to the planet what was happening here what were the potentials and why I'm here so you had divine visitations did they freak you out at first what do you mean divine visitations it just seemed to happen naturally coinciding with this awakening I was going through very very rapidly realizing I was not really from this planet, realizing I was here solely for a mission. I wasn't Mm. coming for a vacation. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure Earth at this time is really the vacation destination in the universe. And that humanity was facing some really dire potentials. Mm. And yet there was this happening taking place that I was given visions around that I know I am a part of. And so I I guess it was by the time I was 16, I was anchored on this path. I had a planetary conscience and caring, and I was fully focused on what I called the one focal point for me to fulfill my mission would be to just follow my inner divine self unfailingly. So who appeared to you? What beings? Well, at one point, I was staying in... Silverton, Colorado, up in the high, high mountains, about 12,000 feet high on on a uh, ridge. And it was surrounded by just magnificent tall peaks, tall 14,000 mm-hmm. foot peaks. And it was there, I was just in a very deep process of awakening over a few months, and I was 18. And one day I got drawn to go to the very top peak. And there... Uh, angel, I don't know who he was, masculine, and very big, appeared to me. Sounds like Michael. It was somebody, like, I'm not sure. So yeah. It appeared to I you. I mean, I have met Michael and others of the archangels now and mm-hmm. all that, but this one um, didn't give a name, but he showed me a lot of 
the dire potentials that were soon to come upon humanity. And I had never read about anything like this or heard about it. But years later, I actually read at Casey and some other seers, and it was exacting. Mm. The potentials were exacting. What were the potentials of the um, negative? Great, ca- like California going and, and a lot of earth upheavals and water inundation and, and things like that. And just humanity in Travai. And yet he showed me, it's like he transferred a key. I guess you could say it was my first alchemical key that I was here, we're here, and to turn the tide of that, that these things were set in motion, that we've seen that before on the planet. Mm. I learned later, uh, 12,600 years ago and beyond at different cataclysmic points where humanity was went back to a more savage consciousness mm. and reality and the breakdown of highly technological societies. Right. So I saw that it was important to bring light to the situation. And I also knew by then, the only thing I knew about my mission was that I was a vessel of healing and light for the planet. I didn't know I would grow into a global healing so mission. What, but what is your big healing global mission now? How would you sum that up for people? <laughs> If you could. Well, it has seven vehicles of positive planetary change. And so through the Temple of Sacred Alchemy, we have a lot of global healing forums Mm -hmm. that I facilitate monthly with my connection to the divine realms as a vehicle and vessel of these divine healing activations. But what is the actual... I'm sorry. What was the actual mission, though? What do you feel like you are here to do specifically with per- your work. personal and planetary transformation helping the planet go through this upgrade and humanity to be upgraded to transform the codes of suffering and all that has been in the dna that's kept humans not actualizing a greater potential well, and that- to move the planet into a um into freedom, enlightenment, and peace. But that's such a key point, the codes of suffering, because that's what we've been trapped in for, what, uh, 50,000, 100,000 years? Mm -hmm. So how do you undo the codes of suffering? Mm -hmm. That became my life's work and mission, a really focal mission, because my mom started this whole cycle of illness that drew me into suffering, and it really helped me get to the heart of this planetary calamity, this great Mm. travail going on, and the histories of it. And so basically my quest was, what is at the heart of suffering, and is there a remedy? Is there a cure? Tell us, please, (laughs) because we're tired of suffering. No more suffering. Well, at the same timing, I had different people coming to me with the most impossible cases. They would somehow find me. I didn't have a you know, a sign up or anything. Because you were psycho, psycho, you had a PhD in uh, psychology. Even before, even before I had mm. my doctorate in psychology, mm. I, from the time of sixteen, somehow had an innate ability for going to the deepest levels of the psyches of humanity and facilitating a healing and a global healing, and then also an innate ability to find and work with aspects of self that were holding conditions in place. So later on, I developed it all into a counseling theory and practice like Gestalt and all that. Right, and I'm sure you help lots of people. What is like people watching, what are the codes to free them from their (laughs) suffering matrix? (laughs) I'm getting to that. Okay. (laughs) I definitely am going to share. Okay. But I just want to give a little background to it because I think it's important that, you know, it has been a quest and that with all these impossible cases coming to me, things that people have thought were unchangeable, irreversible, or incurable, I was able to figure it out. And I found in thousands and thousands of cases, 100% of the time, that all the adverse conditions we're faced with that create misery and suffering are coming out of the unconscious and the subconscious. Not only that, I was able to identify as I worked with people and they had this configuration they're dealing with, this illness or this impossible uh, abusive relationship or whatever it was, financial, that as I traced through the parts of self that were getting upset over this, I could find literally 
what they say in psychological terms is subconscious subpersonalities. These parts of self or younger parts of us, wounded parts of us that are actually have a programming. They mm-hmm. took on beliefs at one point in time and that started the human programs running. They might have taken it on society or they might have family lineage, their heritage, national lineage, and our soul journey lineage. And that these beliefs create patterns that then get projected out into our life, into this holographic field in the movies, the adverse movies we're going through. So the one exciting thing that I found about this is through this understanding and the healing process I developed Mm -hmm. that is that I call the quest, it's a sacred alchemy um, healing process that inner transformation of self or transforming these baser aspects of self back to the gold of the true nature to allow us to actualize a higher potential that this is how we could actually end suffering on earth and that if we're going to continue to try to put our finger in that breaks in the dam to fix every little problem without addressing the cause and core of the whole Mm -hmm. matrix then it's not going to be effective or even build projects and great projects without addressing this level we will not have the success unless we really go and and all of us do our piece to clear this up well i appreciate that and i also know you used your own life to work through a lot of those pieces to, to find <laughs> the root causes of those yes. um those destructive matrices but so if someone's having a problem out there with a relationship or with finances or with a job, what, how do they go back into their subconscious and, and pull out that suffering? You know, I lay it out really easily in the Quest self-healing system, and they can get the Quest Heal Your Life, Change Your Destiny book for free. Mm-hmm. Download it off my website because I want everyone to have this technology no matter where they are what financial but basically there's a seven step process that you go through and what are they you want to hear all seven steps i do i I do okay great well well the first one is really important because this is the point where we are not being run by our shadow self we come into mastery so basically when you're upset it is essential to go in and tune within instead of what they're doing to you out there, right? You're going to go in Mm -hmm. and feel that upset, and then you're going to step back. It's like you're going back into a neutral observer position. So you're observing the upset without identifying what you're... you're, First of all, you're you're, in it, right? Of course, we're angry or whatever. We're We're sad or depressed. frustrated. But it is through the emotions we can really get to the unconscious. And it's kind of the next level down. And basically, the way to do it is to step back from it, just take a breath, after you've, you know, let yourself feel it. You can even Mm -hmm. like, how big is that anger? Is the whole planet a seething volcano? And then step back to get a visual image of the actual part of you Mm -hmm. that is having the upset. When you do that, step number one, you are no longer being run by your shadow. You are in command. So that's the first step of mastery. Okay, and it's essential for us all to come of age now, stop playing out our shadow aspects, stop being babies and diapers. And, right, because if know. we don't step back from it, we engage it, we react to it, we reinforce it. So <laughs> I like what you're saying. Yes, but then we don't want to do what's been taught through a lot of well-meaning people. We don't want to just then float up and we ignore it. Because I found out if you ignore these aspects, you ignore a big piece to the puzzle. And that piece to the puzzle is these subconscious aspects are directly related to the outer condition you're dealing with. They help create it. They're like the creators of it for soul learning and growth and advancement, for resolving or whatever is is happening. So if we do not heal it at its cause and core, then what takes place is 
it we might be in this lofty place while our stomach's turning it can go into illness it will perpetuate mm. the dramas because it's not healed so what the programming is the virus in our human computer system is not healed and transformed right so step two then is what step two is now we move our attention over to speaking directly with the unconscious aspect so that's why getting a visual image is hugely important so once you get that image and you can start dialoguing what happens is you start bringing it through the rest of the seven steps step two is now we understand the subconscious aspect is somehow related to the outer condition. We know it's been in our unconscious for however long, where it got its wounding, where it began the pattern. Mm -hmm. And we want to see how has it been adversely affecting us right. on all levels. So we cover the mental through the belief systems, the emotional, the physical, health-wise, career, right. finances and relationships. Okay, so if some like you've broken up with your girlfriend or something and then there's this sadness, yeah. uh, how do you find a picture for that? It's not a picture about your sadness. It is really getting in touch with caring and having compassion for the part of you that is hurting. Mm. And invariably, yes, it seems like it's happening now, but it's accessing and activating a subconscious part of you that maybe was wounded in childhood mm -hmm. or at another time. So and this pattern. is an opportunity for a cleanup. And mm -hmm. that's what is the high side of all this. It's we have the opportunity to clean up for ourselves these belief systems, these patterns, these adverse movies, the whole mm -hmm. cause and core of suffering for ourselves, our family lines and all humanity. So step three then is once you figure out, once it's sharing how it's adversely affecting you on all levels, bringing the whole thing very conscious, now you have the aspect go back in time, showing you where these patterns were reinforced right. and played out. And finally, you get back to the origin, the originating thing Upset. that happened yes. in this or another life. What happened? Okay. That point in time is extremely important because as you go into step four, mm -hmm. you're going to identify, you're going to have the aspect share with you what is the beliefs it took on. So let's say it's two years old and getting mm -hmm. abused, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, it's going to be, I'm not loved, I'm not wanted, it's not safe here. Or this it's is how I get love, by feeling abused, you know, like, you know, it's like all these stories we well, make up. Well, yeah, the wiring of this mm -hmm. is love. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So when that happens, and, and which is really exciting in my work, I've been able to help people get free of cycles of abuse that maybe even went 60 years starting in their childhood, every single mate. And I do want to say this is not because these people want consciously, I want to be abused, I need to be mm -hmm. so out of the 10 suitors I'm picking the abuser. It's all unconsciously right, done. Right. If we have this programming that love goes with abuse so we're not deserving and, and maybe underlying religious uh, beliefs about the need to suffer to redeem ourselves, then these movies are going to keep playing and they're going to go lifetime after lifetime mm -hmm. and we're going to be in this matrix earth where we keep coming in and it's ever new mm -hmm. misery and suffering so uh, playing the, out. So the fifth step then is? The fourth step the fourth then step. is to identify the beliefs. Right. Then we take the aspect to see how those core beliefs um, created the adverse Right. situations and all of the continued abuse, let's the say. The patterns throughout our lives. Yeah, so we bring them all the way back up to the present. Right. Now we go back again and we help. Well, that aspect now is able to see the patterning, see the whole thing from a higher vantage point. That's so And sort the through, yes. yeah, the third part of the um, step, step four. And to really see the truth. Well, it's not that I'm unlovable. It's not that I deserve abuse. My parent didn't have mm -hmm. parenting skills or conscious. And so it undoes. It's at that point where the first healing begins. Mm -hmm. And it's about unraveling that aspect from false beliefs, misconceptions, and mm -hmm. misinterpretations. It's an exciting step because mm -hmm. everything starts lightening up. Even the aspect that you're seeing will start, you know, 
Jets yeah, farming. And then people start to feel different. They start to feel different about themselves. They actually have more energy. They so are it's freeing up, up that lock, that block. Right. So then the fifth step is... The fifth step then is very exciting. And it is to have the aspect go up to the higher vantage point of the kind of a soul overview. And look at things from the point of your soul coming into embodiment having this experience happen and play out, what would be the gift in it all? What would be the positive? What was the learning? Why did you growth, create that in your... Yeah, right. what's good about it? What was mm -hmm. gained and attained? So it's what usually strength, compassion, caring, self-loving. So there's always a beneficial side, mm -hmm. right? Because really this holographic reality we call Earth is a major soul learning module. Mm -hmm. And souls come here and they have their own individualized modules that they set up with their precepts and their book of life and get their spiritual team of assistants and off they go in mm -hmm. their vehicle of soul learning and growth. But up until now on the planet, souls have been pretty much encoded immediately and suffering and perpetuating in their own little virtual reality game each time mm -hmm. taking over where they left off and these patterns have continued right. and, and there's been too much suffering there's been course. so much suffering we haven't actually known planet. how to get free we thought suffering was a part of the human <laughs> and important matrix. so then in the sixth part sixth part is when the aspect is ready to step free because now it knows it had misinterpretations that cause a pattern. Now it knows it learned and grew tremendously and attained great things. Now it's ready to step free into its full potential self and it will give you a visual image and that image will go next to the original one and you'll see a light-filled image. Mm. That's where it gets exciting because in step seven is the transfiguration and the aspect merges with its higher form and all that light-filled energy dissolves out the false beliefs, the patterns, the records, the memories, the pain, the sorrow, and even how it's been encoded in our mm. physical bodies, how it's adversely affected our health, our relationships, and everything. It's like immediately we're redialing to a new future where that particular aspect or group of aspects are no longer playing out on the shadow side. Mm. Now they're in their full potential aligned with our highest destiny, our highest intention in bringing out the divine plan. Mm. And so now there's a new future for ourselves. Plus there's a link up with these aspects I found that every time you do this work, these unconscious aspects link up with others in your family line mm -hmm. and even all humanity. And so there is a massive global shift that takes place every time we transform mm. a piece to our own puzzle. Right. We're freeing the rest of our lineage, our DNA. Yes, our we're DNA. freeing humanity. And so, well, that's... And, and this is the biggest alchemical key, how to free humanity to live in Eden, to return heaven to earth, how to undo all of this matrix. Mm -hmm. And so many people are so crazily involved of this the bad guys and what are they doing next on the planet right. and they get caught up in that there. drama of conspiracy and paranoia and 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 believing and in the in dire themselves. yes and believing that the planet has to go through turmoil mm -hmm. or we have to go through disasters but working with the divine ones all my whole life so far and seeing so many visions and remembering right before this life and why we all came in, we would not have millions of us on this planet right now undergoing this grand transfiguration, cleaning this up at the deepest levels of our psyches if the planet wasn't meant to be upgraded and we weren't meant to go into this enlightened era. We wouldn't exactly. all be here. That's why I'm doing these programs <laughs> with people like you. you because are just perfect. <laughs> right, because it's time for our awakening. So let's talk That's about it. in this little section the then the final peace or the great awakening for humanity because this is where it's all leading. It's leading to a total planetary transformation. <laughs> so give us that peace of exactly what facet of that how you know, is what that you say, the greater the higher destiny of humans yeah. of the human programming awakening what does that look like what does a planet like that look like 
Yes, well, we're all encoded with it. And what I would call, or what the Divine Ones call the front runner souls, who came in in mass in this time to undergo this transfiguration and to birth this new reality, it's encoded within us. Our destinies are encoded. We see that vision of a transformed world, of a return to Eden, of love being the prevailing focal point on the planet, mm. and living consciously and wise stewards of the earth, and replenishing and updating all the systems so that it's beneficent for humanity, and that we're working in cooperation with the nature kingdom and the elementals mm. to help bring harmony to the field. Mm. Now, this is a, a reality that there's many divine beings, there's many off-world beings, there's many... Uh, beings of light that are physically in embodiment right now to help facilitate this. Mm -hmm. And I really want to say absolutely to everyone who has been in the grip of fear about our future, who has been buying into beings or that have great powers that are going to destroy humanity or one world government, that we are here to change any matrix anything that was set in motion. And because we're in a holographic field, that earth is highly mutable, easily changeable. And I found a way out with the sacred alchemy that this inner work changes everything, changes your future, changes your relationships. I've played with this forever. This is our way out. And if we all do it together and then be in our authentic selves most of the time, which mm -hmm. is a byproduct of doing inner work, so you're no longer in the shadow all day, irritated, frustrated, angry, mad, upset, feeling insecure. No, the second it's running, you're transforming it. In minutes, you're back to yourself. In this proactive, positive self, you are a vessel of a greater light and intention for humanity. And whatever spirit creates in and through you, beautiful music, healing architecture, mm -hmm. whatever it is, um, is that added piece that is transforming our world. And in this way, we're working together across the planet. Everything's getting upgraded. Thank you, Aurora. <laughs> You're welcome. For your gifts and, um, <laughs> and knowing that there's a better future. There is a future that awaits us that is of our highest potential that is the golden age. It is the return to Eden. It is the um, empowerment of the authentic self as we come into the God codes that we have forgotten. So we'll be <laughs> touching on that in the <laughs> next couple of programs. What, what's, Thank you. What's your website? Uh, you can look under AuroraJulianaAriel.com and I have a YouTube channel. There's many, many, many offerings through that and SacredAlchemy.com, which is the temple and the global healing mission. There is global healings every month that I'd love you to tune into because the divine are rocking it in helping clean up a lot of this for us, even as we're doing our piece. Okay, you've heard it here on New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld with Aurora Juliana Ariel, and we'll be bringing you more exciting programs. Thanks for watching.